What are some of the hindrances to effective prayer? All right, and there are hindrances. Uh, uh, we did a message not too long ago uh, entitled uh, Blessing Blockers. And uh, those that's what we're talking about when we talk about what hinders our prayers or what hinders us receiving the blessing that come from our prayers. And there are several things, and I'm going to hit them real quick. Uh, the first thing is found in James, the fourth chapter, verse 3, uh, where the Bible says, Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may spend it in your pleasures. Uh, our prayers are self-centered, and, and rather than us praying prayers that are truly to give God glory and honor, we are seeking it to yes. justify and honor ourselves. And because God knows that if he should grant that prayer, that he's not going to get one ounce of glory from answering that prayer. But you're going to take it, and you're going to use it for your own vain purposes. And because of that, God will oftentimes, and in fact, he will always say no. When you ask for something that he knows that you're not going to use it for his glory. The second thing is found in Isaiah, the 59th chapter, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says here, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities, everybody say iniquity. Iniquity. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Iniquity, sin, these things hinder your prayers from being answered. You can, if, if you're thinking that you're going to live a sinful life and still enjoy all of the blessings that God has in store for those that are obedient to him, you got another thought coming. God requires obedience. He not, not only requires faithfulness and the iniquities and sins that we're holding on to, they are blocking our answers from God. Yes. Number three, the next hindrance is found in Ezekiel 14, <laughs> chapter, verse 3. That's Ezekiel 14, verse 3. The Bible says, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them. Yes. When we have idols that we have erected in our lives, anything that we place in front of God is also standing between us and God and is standing between us and our blessing. Now, there are a lot of things that people put before God. They'll put their job before God. Well, I know I was supposed to be at church today, but my boss man called me in. Hello, somebody. All right. Uh, our children will put before God. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I would have been at Bible study last night, but I had to help my child do this, or I had to do this. And, and, and we tend to erect up idols in, oh, in our lives yeah. and, and let them supersede God moving in our lives. And because of that, they're becoming blessing blockers. Right. Amen. And the blessing that you could have got, All you right. didn't get it because you had an idol standing in the way. The fourth reason is found in Proverbs 21, 13. Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, shall not be heard. Right. Uh, and this, what that is saying is this. If, if you want somebody else, God right. is looking at you. Yeah. And he's knowing that, okay, if I bless you, gonna keep this to yourself. Right. Even though you see somebody else that needs a man, you are too stingy. You are hard hearted to help somebody else. And God is not gonna help you because you won't help yourself. Right. You're blocking, blocking your blessing. So I tell you all the time, God blesses us so that we can be a blessing to somebody else. The fifth hindrance of prayer is found in Mark 11, chapter, verse 25. And the Bible says, And when ye stand praying, forgive if ye have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. You can't be hating on somebody and then expect God to love on you. God is looking at how you relate. That means that, that Sister Nancy, you even got to love me if you expect God to, to show his love and forgiveness to you. We can't we can't come to the altar and, and uh, harbor in hatred, harbor in malice against somebody. We gotta we gotta be willing and, 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 and able to forgive them and 
And then God says, as you forgive them, I'll forgive you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Let's see. The next blessing, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get on through this. Amen. The sixth hindrance is found in 1 Peter 3, verse 7. Now get this. Likewise, ye husbands, right. dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife. All right. As unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. All right. All right. Husbands, if you want to get a blessing from the Lord, you better treat your wife right. You can't treat her like anything and then expect God to treat you like a king. Amen. You are blocking blessings. You are hindering the answers to your prayer because you don't treat your spouse right. Wives, the same thing. Amen. You got to treat us right. I know we get on your nerves. I know we do. I know we do. We get on your last nerves sometimes. But God said, if you want me to answer your prayers, you better treat him right. Amen. Now, that don't mean that you go for anything. I mean, if he just acted like a bum, he's just a bum. Amen. But he was a bum when you married him. Amen. 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 You might have been looking through a different set of eyes when you married him. But you don't got your spectacles on now. And you see him for what he really is. But you know, God still expects you to treat him right. Amen. And, and if you treat him right. God says, I'm going to answer your prayers and I'm going to bless you. And the last point I want to bring on this topic is James 1, verse 5 through 7. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not, and it shall be given to him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. When you ask God to do something for you, you got to go forth as if he's already done it. You're walking by faith and not by sight. You look in the refrigerator and you don't see nothing there. But you still go and set your table, get ready to eat, and you even call your children to the dinner table because you got so much faith that God is going to hear your prayer and answer it. And I declare God will not let you go lacking when you trust in him and you move according to your faith. And when you walk by faith, you are then opening up the doors to get your, your prayers answered. Amen. So I got that selfish prayers, iniquity or sin, idols, being stingy, hatred, not showing love to our spouse, for those of us who are not married, not showing love to one another, our mankind, mankind, amen, and a lack of faith. <laughs> so what what is the importance of corporate prayer? Um, is corporate prayer more powerful than individual prayer or vice versa? What how does how does that how does that go? Well, first of all, we have to understand that we must pray according to God's will, and we must pray in the Spirit, and we must under pray through the Word. But then, after we get all those lined up, get all those hindrances out the way, then we can do what Hebrews 4, 16 says, says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So, these words here make it very clear that God has appointed a way in which we shall seek and obtain mercy and grace. So uh, we must do it God's way. And as we uh, sympathize and, and trust in our high priest, which is Jesus Christ, and, and we go uh, on his, and he goes on our behalf, then we can realize and trust that our prayers will be answered. And, and then there is power in uniting prayer. Now, of course, there's power in individual prayer. Uh, because yes. there's an individual, you go into the closet like God has said, and then you open up to the Lord and allow the Holy Spirit to talk. See, it's important that we let, let, allow the Holy Spirit to That's talk to us. Right. Not spend so much time trying to talk to the Holy Spirit, because he knows what is best for us. Like we said earlier, Romans 8, 26, about how he even uh, interprets and inner and groans and knows exactly what to say. We don't know what to pray for. The Holy Spirit knows that. But once we get all that in line, then we as individual, we will receive answers to our prayers. Well, there's increased power in united prayer. And I think we've experienced that here many times. We've come together as a congregation and begin to intercede and pray with a corporate prayer. God comes in and answers that prayer a lot faster than he does with an individual. Because he delights 
in the unity of his people. He wants to be united because he 